How many of you like saving money? I do. You know, I bet three quarters, if not all of you who are watching this video, likes to save money because then you can take your money and you can spend it on other things that you may need or want, right? That's just human nature. Today's video, I'm going to show you how you can save money and it's not super difficult. It's a skill and we're even going to throw in a really cool artifact that was an heirloom from my great great grandfather. So I'm excited about sharing that with you today. And uh, first time I ever used it was today, right before I made this video. And uh, we'll talk about that. So leather working isn't overly difficult. I learned it as a scout. You know, I think uh, when I was a Cub Scout even, probably in second grade, I made my first leather project. I still have it somewhere. And as the years went on, and as my interests grew, and as my needs grew, I learned how to do leather working. Some of it was more for out of need, necessity, more than just wanting to learn a skill. So I've been a Civil War reenactor since I was 14 years old, and one of the things that I could not find a reproduction of, I had to make myself. So I learned a lot of skills and made a lot of mistakes along the way, but everything helped me to be a quality leather worker. Now I'm no professional, I'm not a saddle maker or anything, but I consider myself pretty proficient at this point in my life with leather working. And I can tell you, if this is the first thing you've ever done with leather, you can do it. It's not that hard. And then if you like it, or if you want to make it nicer, you just grow from there. Everybody starts somewhere. So to that end, before we get really into it, I want to say thank you to my patrons on Patreon, because without their support, then this channel wouldn't be going where it's going. I really appreciate you. And I appreciate all of you just taking the time to watch this video. It means a lot to me. I hope it's helpful to you. Okay, so this was a project I made before I really learned how to sew leather appropriately. This is for a tomahawk. I had a tomahawk and I needed a sheath for it. I didn't want to buy it and I had a bunch of leather just sitting around. So I made it. I made it myself and it was the very first thing that I did that I would consider a major project. Now, if you've already made yourself sheaths and stuff, you might be thinking, oh, that's not that hard. There's a lot of nuances making an axe sheath. There's a lot of learning curves if you're not familiar with leather working. And I did this with just common thread that I had, not sinew, not leather thread, just common sewing thread. And how I did that is because I needed it to be thick, so I just made it four strands, four strands wide through one eyelet, and it worked. It still holds up. I haven't had to make any repairs to this, and I don't know if I ever will. So it works out pretty well. It doesn't look all that nice because the stitching I tried to space it out using a ruler, but um, even that didn't do so well. But I'm still pretty proud of it. You know, it still holds up. So this is just a testament. If you do not have leather equipment, you can make something that is usable. It may not look pretty at first, but as you grow in skill, it'll look nicer and nicer. The most recent leather project I did was this sheath for my Kephart. Now, I told you in my last video, that there's a couple of uh, threads that come undone from wear and tear, where the point of the knife, because this is just a pocket sheath, just slides in down there, right? There's no guard or anything to keep it from dropping in. It went a little too far. And that's pretty common with these type of knives. Um, but as long as you put the welt on there, then your knife shouldn't fall out. And you'll also notice that it has some rivets. Now, when we start talking about how to make these things, I'm going to give you some close-ups on all this stuff. But rivets can be really nice in important areas to give support. This is probably my favorite sheath for a hatchet that I ever made. Now, as you can see, it has some rivets, but it also has the sewing. The sewing was to tie it up, to make sure that it was nice and, and tight. The rivets are, again, in those important places that it might break through. I don't want to lose my hatchet, especially when I'm outdoors. So having some rivet support is pretty nice. I tend to like pocket sheaths for knives without any, uh, without any guard. And I like 
my frog to be angled just a little bit. It makes it easier for me to use. And as long as it's a friction fit, I haven't lost any of them so far. And then if you're making field repairs and you have rivets maybe back at camp, just riveting a sheath is really fast and really easy. But we're not going to talk about riveting today. We're going to focus on the stitching. Because stitching, if you haven't learned how to stitch to either make repairs to your clothing or make repairs to the leather, um, it's an important skill. Now there's a couple different types of stitches too. My personal preference is called the saddle stitch. The saddle stitch is the superior stitch to use when you're doing leather craft. Because if one stitch pops open like this, it's not going to unravel all the way down. Unlike a lock stitch. Now the lock stitch is easy. You know, once you have the tool or maybe if you have a sewing machine, the lock stitch is a lot easier, but it's not as strong. So for outdoor equipment that's going to be used a lot and it might be hitting stuff and you know, just used and abused, the saddle stitch is what you want to use. That's where we're going to start. And I just so happen to have a bunch of scrap pieces of leather that I already did. And I'm going to bring the camera in. We're going to talk about it. And we're going to talk about the process. It's really simple. Let's take a look. So I got my fancy bowl here, my little tool tray. What are you going to need to do this? Ideally, you want at least a very basic awl like this here. Now this, again, with my grandfather's, and uh, you can find it all at Hobby Lobby. You might be able to find one at Joanne Fabrics. And of course, you can always order them online like a Tandy Leather or Weaver Leather Supply. So there's lots of places to get, but an awl is something that is really nice to have. Get one of those. You also want some type of thumb stall or thimble. If you have an extra piece of leather, you can also use that as your thumb stall. But leather is really thick and you're going to be putting a lot of pressure on your sewing. So you want to make sure that you have something to protect your digits. Next is you'll want to have the appropriate leather sewing needles. Now again, if you don't have leather sewing needles, you can use just regular thread. Having an awl or having a nail to pre-puncture the leather is exactly how I made this. Now I took a measurement tool and I went ahead and I marked the even spacing all the way around. And then I used, I think a nail if I remember correctly, it might have been even my drill to pre-do the holes. That makes everything a lot easier. But you can use regular needles if that's what you got, but having appropriate uh, leather needles for leather sewing thread will make your life a lot better. For sewing leather, ideally you want linen. Now this costs a little bit more, but the finish is so much better. Um, this is called the Lin Cable, and I'll put this down below in my description if this is what you get. This is what I use exclusively now because it's wax linen, it's really strong, it looks super sharp, and it's traditional. But you can get more modern contemporary polyester type uh, sewing threads for leather if that's what you like. It's a little bit cheaper, but this is the good stuff if that's what you want to go with. Having punches is nice. But again, as long as you have your awl, you're good to go. I like to pre-punch my leather whenever I do the saddle stitch. It makes things so much quicker. And when I started doing leather working, I got this one here, the four punch. But you can get a whole kit where they have different sizes and different thickness of holes. And that's really all you need to start off. So an awl, your needles, your thread, and a thumb stall or something to protect your digits. These are the basic tools. Now, when we talk about saddle stitching, if we take a look at this piece of leather here, I already uh, put a divot in. That's not necessary, but it's a nice finishing touch as you get into your leather craft. I pre-punched my holes. Now what you're going to do is you're going to thread two needles with your thread. How long do you need? That just kind of depends on the project. But for this demonstration, we're going to go ahead and just for practice, we're going to do about a foot. That's all we're going to need for our demonstration. I will say, having either soap or ideally wax, whether it be beeswax or paraffin wax, 
on your string will make your life a lot easier as well. It won't tangle up and it also helps waterproof the seal. But this thread is already waxed up, so we're good to go. Leave about uh, two inches hanging out. And again, about two inches. Now, if you have a leather horse, leather sewing horse, it makes your life easier. I honestly don't own one, and I never really used one beyond um, me learning how to do leather working when I was a scout. But you have your series of holes, so all you're going to do is you're going to push your needle through, measure halfway, that's about halfway right there, and then you're going to go through the next hole, bring it in, and the needle that's on the opposite side, you're going to run through the exact same hole that your previous needle went through. This is why it's such a strong stitch, because you literally have two lengths of thread that's going through the items. So there is our first stitch right there. Let's do it again. So go take your needle, push it through the hole. And the needle that's on the inside, we're going to go through the exact same hole. And each time, pull it taut. Okay, now, say you're done. You made it all the way down at the end. How are you going to finish it? Well, you're going to take your needle and you're going to push it, go back two holes. So one, this is called back stitching. You got to do it with the other needle as well. Back through. So we want one, two. Now on the opposite side, on the inside of your leather, once you pull your thread nice and tight, you're going to take off your needles, and then you're just going to tie square knot. Now, I like to do three, because each time that you loop through the, uh, the hole and you pull tight, that's a little bit more friction that you have. So there's three. Then I do it again. One, two, three. And then you snip this off with your scissors or cut it with a knife, and that is the saddle stitch. It's really easy, super strong, you can't go wrong with it. Lots of great applications for that. You might be thinking, all right, that's great, Mr. Dyer. Thank you for showing me how to do the saddle stitch, but how am I going to use that to repair my gear? So in the situation of my knife here, as you can see, the thread is coming undone. So how are we going to repair this? The easiest way for me to tell you how to do that is you're going to start two stitches back or more. Could be three, could be four, right? The farther back you are, the stronger it is. But at least two stitches back from where it started to come undone, and you're going to stitch all the way down and again, two stitches on the other side, and then you're going to tie it off on the inside. So let's, let me show you how to do that. I don't think we'll probably go through all of it. So we have our needle, thread. We have our needle thread. Okay, so we're two stitches back from where it came undone. 
We're gonna push through. Another tool that might be handy, if your leather is really, really tight and it's difficult, you might wanna get a pair of needle nose pliers or some type of pliers to use to grab your thread from the other side, especially if your fingers aren't used to it. It'll make your life a little bit easier. Pull good and tight after every stitch. Okay, so we went two that way, two this way. Now we're going to do our back stitching. We want to make sure that our thread is going to be on the outside uh, when we're done. So I'm going to put it towards where my leg is going to be. That way the, the knot won't show. So there's one and one more. And then we can tie it off. Take our strings, pull them good and tight. Now we go one overhand, two, and three. Pull that good and tight. And just like a square knot, do the opposite. One, two, and three. Pull that. Now it's time to cut that off, and this is good to go. Now you just saved yourself some money and saved your knife and your sheath all in one doing, and that took less than five minutes. If you've liked this video so far, if you found it useful, please do me a favor and click like. That way other people find it and it helps them out as well. You're doing them a big favor. We appreciate it. All right, you ready for the artifact? Here it is. This is an antique, really, really old. Like I said, it was my great-great-grandfather's uh, type of speedy stitcher called the All for All. And it was patented in uh, 1903 and then again in 1905. And on this side, it's made by the company uh, C A M Y E R S, so C A Myers and Co. from Chicago. Now they still make new versions of this today. You can go and get this, I think, at Tandy Leather, maybe even Weaver, Weaver Leather Supply sells this. But it's pretty cool because it's an all in one package. So if we open up this little butt end here, it's got a little holder. That's you got your wrench. It's also got a little itty bitty screwdriver. We'll get to that. It has two needles. This is a curved needle, and then the straight needle is on top of it. Now, when you're loading this, having the bobbin already pre threaded is pretty nice. Now, how you do that, it's pretty simple. I'll show you how I did it, anyways. Uh, it does take a little bit of time, but once you got enough on there, it lasts quite a while, especially if you tie it off and you make sure not to lose it. So if we look around, let's see, here it is. If we look around the bobbin itself, you can tie it off. There's a hole right there. There's also a hole on the other side, but you can uh, tie one off here and then you can easily load this. 
by um, just spinning it through. Lock that back in. Put the pin back in. Line it up. Give it a twist with the thumb. And then you use your little tool to screw it back in place. And now it'll spin freely. Now it has a little wrench as well, as you can see here. It's probably better that way, I don't know. But you take your wrench, put it over, and it has a little chuck. That's how you put your needle in. Now the needle has a little eyelet at the very, very tip. So you feed the string along the groove side through the eyelet. Like so, get you some slack, and then put your needle in, just like so. And then you tighten it back down. You make sure that's in the right spot, which I did not get. Take your chuck again. For this, it makes it nice to either have some type of leather stitching horse, stitch horse, or using a vise. I don't have a stitch horse, so I'm going to use my vise and I'll show you how it's done. Okay, so you take your piece of leather and you put it in the stitching horse or your vise where you want your line to be. So if it's pretty straight, you can use the jaws of the vise itself to dictate where that line that you want your stitching to be. Now, you're going to take out, it just depends on how much sewing you're going to do. For our demonstration, we're going to take about six inches of thread. When you have your leather, you stick it in the vise and you want to use the jaws of the vise to basically dictate where your stitching line is going to be. So then as you rest your all along, it's nice and even, and it makes a straight line. So we're gonna go here, we're gonna push through all the way, we're gonna pull back, and the thread on the very first one, we're gonna pull all the way through. We're gonna take out uh, about one and a half the length of the piece of leather, and that's just a guesstimate. It really depends on how big of a piece that you have, and you may just have to add uh, more string. So you might have to stitch it a couple times. So once you have your string, out that you want as extra, you pull back out, and then you go the distance that you want to stitch in. Now you want pretty close stitches. You're going to push in all the way through on the other side, and then you're going to back up. When you back up, it creates a loop that you can see here. So that loop is going to take your running line, the running stitch, you're going to put it through that loop just like that, and you're going to pull across. You want to try to line it up with your leather piece, and then you're going to pull back your awl, and that is going to lock it in. That's why it's called a lock stitch. Then you do the exact same thing. So you go over the distance that you want, work your way through it, go all the way through, back it up just a little bit, not all the way through. Then you take your, your running line, put it through that loop, Beat it all the way across, and then you bring it back out, and you're going to lock it in. We're going to do that a few more times, and then we're going to demonstrate on how to finish the stitch. So again, all the way through, make your loop, run your line, bring it out, lock it in. Again, all the way through, back it out. You have your loop, run your line, and let's do that one more time for the sake of demonstration. All the way through, back it up, and run your line. Okay, so now 
At this point, we're gonna lock that back in and we're going to do a back stitch, a single back stitch. So we're gonna to come towards me through the hole that we already made, put it all the way through. And when we back out, we're gonna feed some more line that we have some stuff to work with and we're gonna cut it. Now I can back my all out. I'm done with my all. And just like before, we're gonna tie it off. One, two, and three for good measure. And again, one, two, and three. We're gonna tie it off. And there we have our stitches that we did with the lock stitch. Now you may be wondering, well, that sure does seem like it'd be strong, right? So if I take my knife here and I cut my last stitch here, just gonna pick it apart and I take it out. Now here's the problem. Now if I pull one direction, it's locked in, right? But if I pull the other direction, it starts unraveling. So it's a strong stitch, but it's just not as strong as the, uh, the saddle stitch. So we got our loop and our lock that came through there. So as that comes undone, that pulls, keeps getting worked out and keeps getting looser and looser. Whereas the saddle stitch, once you pull out the one side, you still have the tension of the other two ends. It doesn't loosen like it does unless there's a wedge between the two pieces of leather that you're using. So that's why the saddle stitch is so much superior to the lock stitch. I hope you found this video useful. I enjoyed making it for you. I enjoy using my great great grandfather's tool that's still useful. That's what I love about this old stuff and all these old artifacts. I'm pretty sure Horace Kephart suggested getting this type of tool uh, in one of his books. And I tried to look it up. I couldn't remember where it was, but I'm very certain Horace Kephart suggested getting a speedy all. And I know it's in the Boy Scout catalogs that I have from the early 1900s. So uh, historically speaking, these were widely available and certainly suggested for use for outdoor use. And packing it away in your backpack doesn't take up any space at all. So it's a nice piece of repair kit. And the lock stitch will do you just fine for repair. It's not going to last as long and it's not as durable as a saddle stitch, but our contemporary sewing machines uses a lock stitch. So as you know from your contemporary gear, the lock stitch is pretty strong. Not as strong, but it's still usable and, and pretty strong when used in the appropriate way. And if it's on gear that's not being used in a particular way that's gonna cause uh, friction and damage that's gonna undo your stitches. So you should be fine with doing a lock stitch. If you're interested in getting one of these, then I put the in the description box a link so you can get your own. I also put a link in there for the thread and for the beeswax that I use. Now any beeswax will do, but um, I'm a penny pincher, so I try to find the cheapest beeswax that I can get uh, for a lot of use. And this was by far the cheapest that I could find. So if you're interested in that, check it out below. Now, next time that we come together, I'm gonna to show you how to repair another piece of equipment and just maintain it. Not so much repair, it, I guess, but just to maintain it. Because again, with this short series, we want to make sure our gear is taken care of. That way it takes care of us. So make sure to subscribe and don't forget the notification bell. That way you are made aware when it comes out. Uh, the deadline for the pre-order for my cookbook is coming up. We have about two months at this point or a month and a half. I do have a cookbook that I'm publishing. It's coming out October 31st. And uh, to pre-order, it's only $20, and you get some extra benefits with it. Like you get uh, updates to it for free. So if you decide to order after, it's going to be a little bit more expensive, and you're not going to get those updates. Pre-ordering is $20.
you can send me an email. My email is in the box below, and it's also in the description. If you're interested in the Horace Kephart knife, then check out this video here. You know, I go a deep dive and I try to explain why I think it's such a great knife and why I think that style was held on for so long. And if you're interested in my video about leather care, then check this video here. And it has some products and some suggestions for you to do well with that. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. Give a kiss to your loved ones and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.